Welcome to Roland University's Support Tutorials video series. Today's lesson will be using a Roland GX cutter and Cut Studio for offline cutting with a third party printer or RIP software in Adobe Illustrator. Step 1 Prepare the file for printing. Using Adobe Illustrator in this particular offline cutting workflow, will be outputting to another printer other than a Roland or another RIP software other than VersaWorks before placing back into your Roland GX cutter and cutting accordingly. So we'll start today's tutorial by opening up our Roland University logo which is in vector format and under window you'll find the Cut Studio plugin. Opening up the Cut Studio plugin window it will appear on the side of your screen and inside will be a variety of functions available for cutting and for print cut use. Outputting paths will send them straight to the Cut Studio software. Outlining text and strokes. Merge overlapping paths, which is like a weld function. Offset path. Crop marks. And marked paths. We'll talk about marked paths a little later. Besides the crop mark button, you can also press this to get to the crop mark dialog box. You see a listing of all Roland devices available. For today we'll use the GX640. When assigning crop marks you'll notice in the preview window a gray area will appear. The gray area is your usable workspace for print cut which can be toggled on and off by the menu or by hitting the crop marks button. Now that we're familiar with the Cut Studio plugin window let's set up our artboard. We want to work with 6 inch decals today so we'll change the size of our decal to the size we want to work with which is 6 inches and we want to change the size of our artboard to the size of the vinyl we're working with. Under File Document Setup we'll be able to change the size of the artboard we're working with. Because we're dealing with the GX640 today we'll assume we're dealing with 60 inch vinyl in which case you'll want to set up your width as the size of your material. And we want to create quite a few decals today so we'll make our height 72 inches. Zooming out, we'll see that our artboard now represents 60 inches wide by 72 inches high. To begin, let's move our decal down to the lower left. And we'll establish our working area. By clicking on the crop marks button, the crop marks will appear. The GX24 only uses three, so for today we'll be using the GX640, which has four. You'll notice that your value cannot go beyond 1616. That is the acceptable width and metric that you can place crop marks. As well, since we have chosen 72 inches as our height, our maximum length is 3200. And it's best to set your X and your Y to be equal. Zooming out, you'll notice your crop marks are outside of your work area. This means they won't print on your artboard. So in order to fix that, we'll go back into our crop mark window. We've determined that the best place for crop marks for this particular design is 1475 by 1750. Clicking OK will move the crop marks accordingly. And you'll notice that they are all on the artboard. This is necessary for them to be printed. In the upper left and the lower right are particularly important for the cutter sensor on the GX640. Now that our crop marks have been assigned, we need to work within the gray area in the Cut Studio plugin window. Your logo should be to the right and above the lower left crop mark. This is to confirm accuracy when doing print cut. Now using the select tool, click only on the lines that you wish to cut. And here is where we use our marked path tool. When clicking on the marked path tool, any selected vectors will now be chosen to cut, as you'll see by the red outline. Since we don't want to cut just one logo today, we'll make copies. Holding Alt, Control, and Shift, 
will allow you to make an extra copy in line with the original. Click and drag to where you want them to be and then hitting control D will make equal copies of the same graphic. Selecting single objects or an entire row of objects using this method. Again, click and drag holding Alt, Control, and Shift. And make multiple copies pressing Control D. You can make as many copies as you like as long as they're not outside of your gray working area. This will affect the accuracy of your contour cut. So we'll delete this last line and stay inside the complete gray working area. Since we have some margin to work with inside of our gray area, we'll shift our decals so that they're directly in the center. This will help with accuracy as well. Dealing with this many decals can be a drain on your computer's resources. So it is acceptable to let the computer sit a while while it's thinking. You can hit the redraw button at any time to refresh the screen. Now let's zoom in. You'll see all of your decals directly in the center of your artboard with your crop marks perfectly placed all inside. When ready, save the file as whatever file format works best with your RIP. In this case, we'll be using EPS. This is the file that is then taken into your RIP software and printed out. Be careful not to skew or change the size. This will affect your cutting accuracy. Once the file is output, you're ready to print. Step 2. Output to the GX Cutter. When finished printing, remove the print from your printer and place into your GX Cutter. To send your data to the cutter, click on the Cut Studio icon which will then send data from Adobe Illustrator into Cut Studio Output Software. And you'll notice the crop marks have already been assigned. So there's no need to do anything inside Cut Studio other than hit on the cutting button, choose the appropriate cutter which is the GX640, and click OK. It's as simple as that. This concludes our tutorial for today. For more information visit us at www.rolanddga.com.